everyone, thanks for clicking. I am Niharika. Well, in today's lesson, we are going to look at some expressions with the word cry. Now, you shed tears in pain and sorrow. But in English, we do have expressions that you can use in your daily conversation using the word cry. So they are not only related to crying and whining, but you can use it in your daily conversation as well. So let's get started. There are six expressions here and let's look at the very first one. A crybaby. Now who is a crybaby? Well, someone who cries for anything and everything. So someone who cries on all silly matters, always whining, always complaining. Well, that person is a crybaby, especially kids. Have you ever noticed kids are always whining? If he's not a happy child, he's always whining and complaining. So he is such a crybaby. But then it's not just kids. Now I know adults who are always complaining and crying about everything, about every situation. So they are cry babies. So use this expression for someone who is always crying and whining about silly things, okay? So they are cry babies. If you have a friend, then you're going to say, oh, you are such a cry baby. Look at you. You're always whining and complaining. So that's how you can use this expression. Now, the second expression that I have for you with the word cry is cry over spilled milk. You know, in life, at times, we are very unhappy and worrying about things that have just happened but there's no point because you cannot really rectify or undo these things, right? So, so for example, um, you bumped your car into a tree. Okay, now you bumped your car into a tree and there's nothing that you can do about it. So there's no point worrying and crying over this because you really can't go back in time and change the situation. So what's the point crying over the spilled milk? So some situation that you are worrying about and are extremely unhappy about it that cannot be undone or rectified, then you are crying over spilled milk. So that's how you would use this expression, okay? Let's have a look at the third expression here. Cry me a river. Now, when do you use this? Now, this expression is used in a very sarcastic way. Now, there are people that you meet in life who are always complaining about something and you really don't care. You're very unsympathetic to these people. Then you sarcastically comment, cry me a river. For example, your colleague, okay, he is complaining that he's not got a raise. He's hardworking, you know, he's telling you, look at me, Naharika, I'm so hardworking and I'm so diligent about my work, but I haven't got a raise. So if I have to be sarcastic and I really don't care, then I'm going to say, oh, cry me a river. I have been working for this company for five years now and I haven't got a raise. So I'm being sarcastic. I really don't care what you are going through. Look at my situation. So that's how I would use this expression. Now let's have a look at the fourth one. Cry in one's beer. Now this expression is used for self-pity. Now the people, especially your friends, probably they go through a breakup or they're not getting a job and they're complaining and they're just constantly calling you and telling you, oh, look at my life, it's just miserable. I, I don't see anything good happening in my life. So, you know, they are self-pitying themselves. 
so they are crying in their own beer or they are crying in one's beer so it means that they are self-pitying themselves so the people who are who keep calling you or when they meet you they're just complaining about their life so it means that they are crying in their own beer so if i have a friend who keeps complaining about her life to me so i'm gonna say oh she's always crying in her own beer you know she needs to do something about her life now right so she's always self-pitying herself the next one cry wolf now cry wolf uh, is false alarm hey do you remember the story uh, the boy who cried wolf well the story was about this shepherd a young boy who was a shepherd who uh, used to give this false alarm to the villagers that oh my god there's a wolf help save us and the villagers used to come running with their sticks and everything that they could to help that shepherd but the villagers used to realize that the boy is just playing a prank and when really a wolf came the villagers thought that it's just a false alarm and let's not go save this boy and that wolf ended up attacking the sheep and the boy right remember that story as a child I'm sure you all have heard about this story so this phrase comes from that story cry wolf well it is used now as an expression in English where someone is trying to get some help when they really don't need it so it's like a false alarm like my cousin she's always screaming in the house that there's a mouse in the house but I know it's just a false alarm so I'm gonna say oh she's just crying wolf okay so that's how I would use this expression so someone who's always lying or just asking for help when it's not really needed then you can say oh she's just crying wolf okay so that's how you use this expression and then the last one that I have for you is crying shame crying shame is a very unfortunate situation when things are just not going right then it's a crying shame so you know it's very unfortunate like my cousin uh, she filed for a divorce she lost her job she doesn't have much money so it's just that you know things are not great in her life so it's a crying shame it means she's just facing a very unfortunate situation in her life right now uh, another example for you maybe your colleague um, is facing a very bad time his wife is not well and uh, you know he's not doing great in his career so it's a crying shame so it's a very unfortunate situation that your colleague is going through so that's how you would use this expression okay so it's not just about crying and whining and complaining but yes use these expressions rather than just saying that I'm crying she's crying he's crying go ahead use this to sound very fluent and confident in English and I'll be back with a new lesson soon till then you take care hi friends I'm Niharika well English is the most widely spoken language but at times people do mispronounce certain words there are different reasons for it you know there are words that are always being mispronounced by so many people so people tend to think well that's the pronunciation so in this lesson I have picked up around 15 random English words which are usually mispronounced by many people so we are gonna learn how to pronounce these words correctly Let's get started. The very first one, the dry fruit. Well, it's pronounced as almond. Many people tend to pronounce it as almond. I would like to eat five almonds. That's incorrect. The correct pronunciation is almond. Okay? 
almond. Okay, so the L is silent.